Also happening now, Congress is back in session, at least half of it. The Senate returning from holiday break. The House, John, is skipping Monday. They're going to begin tomorrow. A little longer break, break for the House. I like that idea of skipping Mondays. Hope you're off to a good one, though, everybody. I'm Jenna Lee. And I'm John Scott. This month, Congress is looking to avoid the debt ceiling and another government shutdown. Comprehensive immigration reform also on the agenda. In just a few hours, Janet Yellen is expected to be confirmed as the next Federal Reserve Chair. And whatever happens with those issues, you can be sure there will be a heated battle over extending unemployment benefits for more than a million Americans. Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid has scheduled a procedural vote on it later today. But even though, it's, uh, even though the proposal is bipartisan, that doesn't necessarily mean everyone agrees. Dean Hiller is not uh, some maverick that is out... Uh spewing socialism. Here's a guy who's a, really a conservative person and he wants to extend unemployment benefits. I admire him for doing that. And can we get four Republicans agree with the American people that we should do that? I would certainly hope so. I think it's wrong to borrow money from China or simply to print up money for it, but I'm not against having unemployment insurance. I do think, though, that the longer you have it, that it does provide some disincentive to work and that there are many studies that indicate this. Joining, joining us now, A.B. Stoddard, associate editor and columnist with The Hill. Byron York is chief political correspondent for The Washington Examiner and a Fox News contributor. Unemployment benefits, the big argument of the moment, Byron. Uh, is, that, is, is that because Democrats are loath to talk about Obamacare? Well, they, they'd rather talk about anything other than uh, Obamacare, and they, they believe they're on the right side of public opinion uh, with this unemployment thing. I, would, I think what you just saw Senator Paul say is kind of the emerging position from Republicans who realize that there is a lot of public support for extending unemployment benefits. So they say, well, they're not really against it completely. They just want to pay for it. And this bill in the Senate has no mechanism to pay for the increase in unemployment benefits. So they're suggesting that perhaps if there could be a, a added some pay for provision, then they might support it. A lot of people uh, aren't necessarily sure about how this does get paid for AB and, and it comes out of payroll taxes, which some people argue actually hurts the working poor. Well, there's actually always a pay for lying around. I know people can't believe that, but um, as you look to the last budget um, agreement that came together in December, there are always ways to find things to pay for. I mean, something like this, uh, didn't make it at a total of $28 um, billion to, into the, the budget agreement of December, but they're looking at a temporary three-month extension that's much cheaper. And I think at the last minute, if the Democrats can't do it on their own with Dean Heller, they're going to find a way to find some pay-fors, um, and there's a way to do that. At some point, what Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid said about emergency spending never being paid for comes to an end because everything can't be an emergency. And if they want a bipartisan agreement on extending on insurance uh, benefits, they're going to have to find um, some money to get some Republicans. Yeah, uh, it, there are arguments to be made against extending unemployment benefits. It, it sounds heartless sometimes to make them. Peter Morisi, the economist from the University of Maryland, was on Fox & Friends earlier this morning talking about some of the downsides. Listen. Watch Harry Reid yesterday say, if you put this money in the hands of people who are unemployed, it helps the economy because they go shopping, they put gas in their car, do whatever to pay their bills. How does giving a middle class executive $1,000 a month help the economy if it's paid for by taxing the working poor? You're just taking money out of one hand and putting it in the other. One person spends it, but then another person who is in much more need doesn't have it for necessities. Right now, Byron, there is only one Republican on record in the Senate as supporting the extension of unemployment benefits. That's Dean Heller. He is the co-sponsor of the bill. He happens to come from the state of Nevada, uh, Nevada, where the uh, unemployment rate is two points higher than it is in the rest of the nation. Are other Republicans going to jump on board? Uh, no, I, I don't think you're going to see it get past a Republican filibuster today, and they and they will be citing uh, these arguments about uh, uh, making a disincentive, continued benefits being a disincentive to work. But remember, this is just a temporary thing. Democrats are going to come back in a few months and want a longer extension of unemployment benefits. I mean, we're five years into this economic recovery, and they're fighting for longer and longer uh, unemployment insurance benefits. So this is going to be a fight all through 2014 because 
because Democrats believe it could be a winner for them in the midterm elections this November. Uh, okay, so that's that's the political question, A.B. Uh, does concern over the economy trump um, anger, I guess, over health care, Obamacare? That's the key question. What you're going to see with the anniversary of John F. Kennedy's war on poverty, you're going to see a huge push by the Democrats to talk about raising the minimum wage and extending unemployment insurance for uh, people who are, you know, really suffering hardship and still looking for a job, and that's why they deserve the benefits. Um, these are not going to pass. They're going to be a campaign platform for the Democrats to continue to try to distract from Obamacare. While these issues actually poll well, in the middle and on this and on the left um, and, and, and sometimes have a majority. This is a year in which a huge transition is taking place with people's health care and I think that if they're angry and frustrated, confused over that, it's going to be hard to really use income inequality and the minimum wage as an issue at the polls in November in this really rocky transition year for the Affordable Care Act. 11 months away from Election Day. A.B. Stoddard, Byron York, thank you both. Thank you.